FaceTime, WhatsApp, chat, group call on Zoom, pet your cat. Phone your loved ones, laugh and cry, look up something new to try. Do some gardening, clean your home, write that novel, make it a tome, shop for neighbours, volunteer, self-isolate, don't live in fear. Call up that person you haven't spoken to in months, check on them every week, at least once. Make time to help your community, donate, deliver, connection is key. There's an old lady in number four, give her a call, drop food at her door. Take time to appreciate the NHS and all of our carers doing their best. For those of us lucky enough to survive, this crisis reminds us that to be truly alive, we need to remember we are all one, every single organism under the sun. We're interconnected, we're in this together, and we'll come out of this stronger than ever. Forget the barriers, forget the divides. Ignore those that tell you you have to take sides, because I need you. And you need me. Let's love one another. And set ourselves free. I am at home. I'm in lockdown. Where I've written this letter to you. And I realise you're everywhere. You are underneath my house. You have allowed my house to be built upon your soil and make it my home. You have allowed this through your kindness. Maybe you're not that happy with all these towns we've created, all the cement, but there you are, still giving your soil to us. You're in my spinach pie. You're in the paper where I've written this letter to. I'm sorry we haven't reflected back the same qualities to you. Maybe after this lockdown is over, we come to the realization that we have always been your guests and that we were never your masters, nor will ever be. Thank you, Earth. Santiago, April 8th. 2020, full moon in Libra. Dear Earth, I am a geographer from Chile who fell in love with you many years ago, despite the first memory of my life being when you so passionately quaked and I severely freaked out when I was almost three. As you know, our relationship ever since has been intense, polyamorous, colorful and profound. I humbly respect that you are the bigger person here and that I learn infinitely more from you than you do from me. You're also the most moonstruck artist, the most phenomenal scientist and the most extravagant raw food chef I'll probably ever have the pleasure to gravitate to in this or any other life to come. And your blue caress just makes me breathe so green. My love, please don't listen to them. I don't want to live in Mars. I know that you love me, and of course, all of your other lovers, but I don't feel jealous. The more, the merrier. Oh, and one last thing about this tipping point. I feel it too. All of us are in this together. Mother Moon, Father Sun, Earth is you and me. Yours, Pau de Planet. Dear Earth, is this your doing? Is it? But of course not. All you ever do is provide us with a place to live, a natural source of food, water, Mother Nature's remedies, and so much more. Oh Earth, Remind us that we will get through these tough times and that if we unite, we will survive. But I must say, people were told that COVID-19 was spreading like wildfire and they stock up on food, medicine and toiletries. If you were to walk into a supermarket 
the aisles would be empty. However, when people are told that the ice caps are melting and the sea levels are rising, they don't seem to experience the same sense of urgency. Oh Earth, once we have tackled this worldwide issue, give us the wisdom to tackle another worldwide problem, the problem of climate change. The flowers have blossomed and the sun plays hide and seek with the clouds. You are perfect and you wait patiently for when we'll be able to open our doors and walk unafraid down our streets, less than two meters away from the people we love. In this time of uncertainty, we are more than grateful to our key workers and frontliners who sacrifice their health for those who are unwell and in need of medical attention. In conclusion, please bring comfort to those in pain and guide our world leaders into finding a solution. Help us to find freedom in captivity. Dearest E, how are things? Sorry, we don't know each other very well, not yet. I'm only 24, you see, and haven't really done that much, but I want to do more. Recently, I am getting lots of pictures of you in my head. And some are really frightening, and some are quite beautiful, and some make me want to sob and sob and sob and sob. I'm sorry if this is embarrassing, or a bit crazy, or I look like I'm on drugs, but you're the Earth, and one should be straightforward with a planet. When I was little, that was my picture of you. A planet. A blue circle with green clouds, and that was just that. I am being haunted by visions. Babies in supermarkets that wail are you. Half-eaten donkeys pulling carts are you. The groaning and moaning of the tumble dryer begging for a break is you. You aren't blue or green. You're everywhere. I want these pictures to stop. But I have to stop first. Please know that I love you. Like seriously, deeply, deeply, I love you. The young love the old in this coronavirus crisis. Through mutual aid, through physical distancing, through just caring and loving, and more. The old will afterward have the chance to return the favour. Can the old learn to love the young in the longer emergency of the climate and ecological crisis? Can those who run the world and those who vote for them learn from this intergenerational happenstance that it's high time for the young and unborn future generations not to be thrown out of the frying pan of corona into the fires of climate breakdown? Corona is a test case. Looming climate breakdown will be even harder to pass. Climate is so much harder than coronavirus to deal with for beings such as ourselves with narrow time horizons. And yet, there's also a sense in which maybe it's easier. For Corona can scare us about each other and might push us away from each other into illusions of separation, even as we know that we are tied together in a common fate by the possibility of contagion and by the public health sanity and forcefulness needed in order to counter that contagion. Your health is my health and my health is your health. But Corona can make us a bit paranoid about each other Whereas with climate, at least it's clear that we have to come together in the mother of all mobilizations in order to have any chance whatever of rising to the challenge. What this time of Corona offers us, in short, is the prospect of intergenerational reconciliation. Nothing could be more badly needed for us to have a future. Once we've saved the old, we must save the young. Letter to the Earth, my letter of love and hope. In the time of crisis, we all need help and support. All doctors in the world help people to get over the crisis. And people very thankful for taking care. Especially old men need help and support. I hope everyone will return to the usual life. This crisis will teach us love each other more, take care more, 
and Earth will have a rest after we'll begin the new life cycle. Mercury in retrograde. This morning, my watch stopped at 10 past nine in honor of the new time. From the upstairs window, I watch two crows swagger importantly across the crooked rooftops. It comes to me that I've not seen them properly before now, heftier somehow, blacker than I knew. Two well-dressed gents in morning coats. Hello, how do you do? Outside drinking tea, I hear before I see a rakish hawk with moth-coloured feathers land in the ivy, close, too close to me. The spilt tea sears, but I'm frozen in the majesty of a king. His head pivots, clear grey eye fixed on mine. I often come, you just never see. This discourse seems normal now, the natural order of a freshly hatched world place where animals speak. All morning, I'm aware of a sound building, slow and steady. I hear it in the breeze coming off the sea, the low, thrilling drone of an orchestra warming up. It sets my heart drumming, tears prick behind my eyes. Are these symptoms? Perhaps I'm sick and should rest. On the beacon, the sky roars above me, grass sighs beneath my feet. In the woods, there is a humming inside the swaying trees. The voice is hers and always has been. Loving, immense, fierce and fair. Where have you been? She whispers through the wind in a language older than time. I give thanks on my knees in a field of swirling greens and yellows. A man calls to his bounding dog, a marmalade hound with something to tell me. His human gaze is hard and sharp in the brilliant afternoon. All right there? He's misty through my tears. Yes, yes, I was looking for violets, that's all, they grow here. At night, I swim through the black water canals of an unfamiliar city with a child on my back. The buildings there are made from sand. I must take care not to touch or they will slide into the soupy water. Awaking doesn't fade the dream. I see its residue in the empty streets and abandoned shops of the village. A memory snags at the edges of my mind. Is this the place I queued for coffee? Bantered with that sleepy-eyed girl behind the counter. The image blends with a scene from a movie I once saw, a time that came before. Walking back up the track past the sheep, grazing unfazed by the relentless changes, I remember I forgot the milk. You always do, they say, tugging at stubborn wildflowers. The sun dips, splits the sky open with shards of bloodshot orange. A symphony of cellos starts in the fiery clouds above. Her voice again, asking me to dance. This is a love letter in a time of crisis. Dear world, the sun is out, the birds are singing, and yet our consciences keep us under house arrest, whilst others battle the front lines of an unseen enemy. It might seem unreal, but for me it's deja vu. We had a practice run last year in Hong Kong. When the streets were filled with chaos, we curfewed ourselves. When they started firebombing train stations, we stopped going out. When the tear gas filled the streets, we tried to stop breathing. In a war, there are no winners. In a war, there are always casualties. Where there is life, there will always be death. Times like these strip our lives down, removing the superfluous, the strangers, the non-essentials of life. We have nothing else to do but to stop and reflect on the sacrifices we are willing or not willing to make.
to consider our own actions of the present for an uncertain future, to reconnect with who we are and why we are here, and to reconfirm the essential nature of art and books and music and story and entertainment, so to fill the empty spaces with meaning. We must never forget the year that never was, 2020 that promised so much, and then life did its thing of reminding us not to take anything for granted. Life reminded us that time moves, even if we don't, that rules and rights and wrongs are arbitrary and are simply humanity's way of forming meaning, of constructing order. And yet, sometimes order is also an illusion. But memory, memory is ours, wholly and solely ours, and we must make use of time and space and love to create such moments. For time changes everything. Some of you may be too young to know, but I tell you now. The heart's memory eliminates the bad and magnifies the good. And thanks to this artifice, we manage to endure the burden of the past. We will endure together. Love from a small voice in Hong Kong. Oh my goodness. I had put this on my list of things to do, but now I find the deadline is today at midnight. I don't feel prepared. I should have pondered over this more, prepared, rewritten, mulled it over. I'm writing this from the home front and what needs to be done. I leave all the scientific stuff to the experts. I can only write about what I know about. This is mostly to do with the kitchen and the supermarket. After we have all learnt the lesson you have tried to teach us with coronavirus, we need to make some serious changes in the way we shop and cook. Firstly, I would like to propose that, like Brazil, we get rid of ultra-processed food, which is usually covered in plastic, contributing to our ever-growing landfills. In fact, the beauty of getting rid of these foods is that they will also combat the problem of obesity at the same time. These foods are highly profitable for the multinational food industry, but very detrimental to the health of the nation, adding to the problems faced by our NHS. Supermarkets will need to take up the vital role of educating its customers in returning to cook from scratch. This will also need to be echoed by government, with a propaganda campaign similar to that in the Second World War, with the BBC playing a crucial role in teaching families to cook again. Customers will no longer to need the choice of buying vegetables in plastic. All fruits and vegetables will be available with no plastic covering. Farming practices must be to preserve the earth. Industrialised farming must be abolished. New jobs in sustainable local farming must be cultivated. These must be our absolute priority in starting to deal with some of the problems we are facing from the Ministry of Home Affairs. This is just to tell you, I'm the one missing the plums today. The chill tray is empty. My heart just skipped a beat and the thought of not having any more plums. Apples, guavas, red juicy mangoes. The fruits are on the trees and not the departmental store. You must be feeling good now that you're all inside. Birds and trees must be loving our absence. You must be taking care of yourself, your oxygen and food chain, your manicured leaves, now that you finally got a chance to breathe. If you read this, let me know. If you're still willing to talk, I promise to listen this time. Maybe we can still meet somewhere, halfway, and chat about this. Yours. Dear small islands everywhere, I think of you often. Many of you swim in oceans of water and have been happy to do so for aeons. Until now. 
Now the seas of time lap at your shores, and time is ebbing away as you float suspended, without life boys or influence over waves that auger droning. The melting ice, the rising waters, Where is the lifeboat? How many will it hold? Will it be overwhelmed by this swell as you abandon the ship of your lives in search of safe harbour? Will the drawbridge of safety be drawn up as you float ideas of salvage or rescue? Will hands that are drowning not waving, be hoisted from the flood. I was born on the small islands, St. Kitts Nevis. Now I inhabit a big one, Great Britain, where the power of the Industrial Revolution gave birth to material consumption. Like a pendulum, global consumption has swung to its zenith. It is way past time for the tide of consumer souls to drain and flow to a spirit level that slakes our thirst without submerging us. Or the earth will witness such movement of islands, small to big, as no ark could accommodate. The waters of time are storming. To keep small islands safe, let the big ones learn to live smaller. Yours sincerely, Tyrone Huggins. <laughs>